classical trachea. What do we have here? We have a large space filled with air. We have cartilage surrounding this space uh, almost completely. There's a small area here where there's an abscess of cartilage. It looks like we have a thin, perhaps single or pseudostratified columnar mucosa, which we'll examine more closely. Uh, we can see some fat, and then we see another tubular structure filled with air that is lined by a squamous, uh, stratified squamous mucosa, non-keratinized, no skin appendages. And at the edges of the uh, ring of cartilage, or almost a ring, we can see uh, thyroid tissue here and here. This is a classical trachea. Let's take a little closer look. The trachea is uh, considered part of the upper respiratory tract. Uh, you can see that we have basically a columnar mucosa here filled with ciliated, pseudostratified columnar cells with occasional goblet cells. Here's a nice row of cilia along here. Here's a goblet cell, here's a goblet cell, here's a goblet cell. And let's get some goblet cells in, that are in even uh, better focus. Um, well, that one uh, has twisted around a little bit, so let's look at a better area here. All of these are cilia, a nice little row. All of these are goblet cells. All of these are uh, pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. The little layer of connective tissue directly underneath it is lamina propria, chiefly loose connective tissue. And we can also see directly under that are glands. They're called submucosal glands because at this level we have submucosa. We also have rich blood vessels in the submucosa as well. So we have our pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium with uh, goblet cells. We have our basement membrane. We have a small amount of loose fibrous connective tissue in the lamina propria uh, of the mucosa. And then we immediately get into the submucosia, which has a lot of blood vessels and mucus secreting glands. And then we have connective tissue in the adventitia. And technically there is no media, I guess, in the... Uh, trachea, but that's probably a moot point. We have classical hyaline looking cartilage here, but technically uh, if we did an elastic stain and there were a lot of elastic fibers and we didn't know this was trachea or it wasn't trachea, you have to remember that cartilage looks like, elastic cartilage looks exactly like hyaline cartilage unless you do a um, stain for elastic fibers. And now we have some more fibrous connective tissue, our smooth muscle, actually at the edge of this trachea because they have long spindly cigar shaped nuclei in which there are no striations and if we kept moving this guy around down to here we would soon see that there is an area where there is now a lack of cartilage where the cartilage ends and this is chiefly smooth muscle. In fact, it's called a tracheolus muscle because it's a posterior part of the trachea in which there is no cartilage. Uh, and it doesn't need cartilage because it uh, doesn't need the protection uh, anteriorly. However, posterior to it, you have another uh, band of uh, smooth muscle. And then very soon, you get into another tubular structure, which is the non-keratinized stratified epithelium of the uh, esophagus, which is always posterior to the trachea. And let's get another big overview look. Uh, once again, the posterior tips of the cartilage, the uh, tracheolus muscle. There's also an uh, uh, elastic uh, membrane in this area as well. The adventitia consisting of cartilage and connective tissue and smooth muscle. The submucosa consisting of a lot of blood vessels and these chiefly mucous glands. And then the uh, mucosa consisting of pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium with occasional goblet cells. There aren't too many goblet cells in this area. 
but there's a couple of them up here, aren't there? Here's one, here's one, here's a couple, and here's a couple of good ones as well. This is the world's greatest classical trachea, and I thank you very much.